About 10 million invasive wild boars are currently roaming Spain, destroying crops and causing at least 5,000 accidents each year. Faced with these serious losses, what countermeasures have Spanish farmers applied to control the number of wild boars? If you're looking for new ways to deal with this invasive species, join me to find out in the following video. If you are a Spanish person, you probably won't be surprised when it comes to invasive wild boars. But you will have a headache in dealing with them to protect your fields. Wild boars cause heavy damage to agricultural land in Spain, especially grassland. Because they have long snouts and strong teeth, they help them dig and find food, damaging the soil by gnawing on grass and biting up tree roots. This action reduces the uniformity and flatness of the soil surface, reducing the nutritional quality of the soil. Every time they go looking for food, wild boars often gather in herds of 10 to 30 animals. In Spain, they have caused severe damage to thousands of acres of grassland. Certain areas of Spain, such as the Sierra Morena and Donada National Park, have suffered heavy damage from wild boar activity, causing grasslands to weaken and lose their productive potential, agricultural export, This causes not only economic losses but also affects local ecosystems and long-term land health. If your area is being invaded by wild boars, please comment one so we can help you find a way to deal with it in the next part of the video. The invasion of wild boars has caused serious damage in Spain cities, especially Barcelona. With an estimated population of more than 2 million wild boars nationwide, this number has doubled over the past two decades. They have disrupted the daily lives of city residents in Barcelona in 2021 alone. There were about 1,200 traffic accidents involving wild boars recorded. This not only possess a risk to traffic safety, but also causes property damage and impacts human health. Wild boars not only cause damage to streets and parks, but also affect gardens and farm around the city. The expansion of wild boars from natural environments and farms into cities is often explained by reduced natural living conditions and scarce food sources. Their adaptation to the town environment and the availability of food from garbage has caused them to find their way into the city, causing many problems for the residential community. The estimated animal economic damage caused by wild boars in Barcelona is up to 12 million euros. An alarming number that needs to be dealt with drastically. Are you looking forward to how to deal with wild boars? Don't take your eyes off the screen. Continue watching how to deal with it right away. According to my research, Russian people often deal with wild boars by using hunting dogs, which are loyal allies used to hunt and chase invasive wild boars. Meanwhile, Spanish people often use traps to hold back one leg of wild boars to limit their movement and control the number of invasive species in the area. Before jumping in, learn about the effectiveness of using this method. You need to know how to install and operate this type of trap. This type of trap 
is a traditional trap consisting of a long sturdy steel cable about three feet long tied tightly to a large tree and a forest where wild boars often hide. Each end of the rope will have a trap surface designed so that when the wild boar steps on it, the trap mechanism will tie in one leg, making it impossible for them to escape. This type of trap will differ from other types of food traps in that it does not require the use of bait. You should note that this type of trap needs to be replaced on a flat ground surface. When the trap's operating mechanism is fully set up, the hunter will cover the trap with a layer of leaves so that the wild boar cannot detect it. Hunters need to regularly check traps. This type of traps has a unique feature. The more wild boars try to resist, the more the trap will tie in their legs. They try to escape the trap for a long time, causing them to lose their ability and strength. When the wild boar is trapped, the hunter will tie its snout with specialized tape and tie its four legs together. To ensure safety during their transportation to the pressing area, this not only helps hunters easily control them, but also to ensure that they do not cause any harm to the hunter. However, if the hunter is not careful, there is a risk of being attacked by wild boars during handling. Wild boars can become very dangerous when they are threatened or injured, potentially causing serious injuries to hunters if they do not follow safety measures while trapping. Therefore, the use of traps requires permission from local authorities. Hunters need to take courses on how to set traps and learn how to handle situations when attacked by wild boars. Do you know why Spanish people can quickly locate wild boars without having to directly search? They have to invest in more equipment to deal with wild boars. They simply use drones equipped with infrared and thermal sensors to search for wild boars hiding in dense cornfields at an altitude of about 150 meters. Cameras allow hunters to observe wild boar movements from above. If you were at home and could still observe what the wild boar was doing, would you believe this? Using drones helps support helicopter hunting, according to a report by the Royal Spanish Hunting Association, RFEC. In 2022, about 20,000 wild boars were destroyed using helicopter hunting. The use of aircraft to hunt wild boars in Spain has been significantly effective in controlling and reducing the number of invasive wild boars. Airplanes provide a flexible and fast means of transportation, allowing groups of hunters to locate and access areas where wild boars are often active with ease. Airplanes also help in moving quickly between different hunting areas, optimizing hunters' time and energy. Since then, wild boar hunting aircraft has become an important tool in efforts in protecting and manage the wildlife in Spain. Besides, Spanish people oppose the use of hunting equipment by plane for many reasons. First, they are concerned about safety issues, including the risk of plane crashes, frightening noise, and environmental pollution. Second, they claim that this method negatively affects the environment, ecosystems, and wildlife. Third, many people 
object for ethical reasons, arguing that using airplanes for hunting is unfair, unsportsmanlike, cruel, and can lead to ecological imbalance. Finally, costs are high and may impact traditional ecotourism and safaris. Thank you so much for watching this entire video. Comment one if you agree with the helicopter method of dealing with wild boars. And comment zero if you think the Spanish people's method of trapping wild boars is unique. Click the like button now and subscribe to the channel to watch the latest videos on how to deal with wild boars. What would happen if overnight all of the livestock on the farm were attacked in mess? The sheep and goats lay motionless on the ground. Something terrible had happened during the night by the foxes. Foxes are one of the most invasive species in Germany. From 2000 to 2020, fox populations increased from 300,000 to 600,000. The fox population appears to be unaffected and dealt with by wild species in the wild. They burrow, breed, and invade residential areas. They often attack livestock at night. Chicken farms have been identified as their main target at night. Chickens, with their poor vision, they will often rest in small farms, which is good for attacking chickens. They will lurk in areas outside the fence and infiltrate the farm. Unharvested chicken eggs outside the farm are also one of their favorite foods. So how did the farmers know that it was a fox? Every morning, after visiting the chicken farm, the number of surviving chickens is very small. The attacked chickens lay still on the ground. They realized that there had been a fight last night. Foxes often attack chickens next. This is the most dangerous position on their bodies. So how can we protect these cattle farms? Lick traps are method of fox population control that have been used in Germany since 19th century. The implementation of lick traps involves strategic placement in areas frequented by foxes, such as near livestock, barns, or pastures. The mechanism of these traps is designed to close quickly when the fox sits foot inside, effectively capturing the animal. Rural areas are ideal habitats for foxes, including large forests, grasslands, and wastelands. As a result, these areas are particularly vulnerable to foxes. Thanks to this trapping method, Fox numbers have decreased significantly by about 20% over the past two decades. Every year, about 20,000 foxes are captured through food traps in Germany. However, it should be noted that the actual number of foxes caught using the lick clamping method may exceed this number. There are foxes that cannot survive after being caught in a trap. Despite lake hole traps being proven as a successful means of population control for foxes, they're not without challenges. Some issues associated with them include the potential to cause pain and injury to the trapped foxes. Moreover, there is a risk of inadvertent trapping of other animal species, such as dogs, cats, 
or rabbits raising ethical concerns and practical considerations about the broader impact of this population control method. The ethical and broader ecological considerations surrounding their use underscore the need for a comprehensive and thoughtful approach to wildlife management. The concerns about unintentional harm to non-target species and the moral implications of causing distress to capture animals emphasize the importance of continually evaluating and refining population control methods to strike a balance between effectiveness and ethical responsibility. In Germany, hunting is subjective to strict guidelines set by the federal hunting law applicable throughout the country. This regulation stipulates that only persons with a valid hunting license are allowed to engage in hunting activities. The nocturnal nature of the fox makes the night a wild time for hunting. Armed with all kinds of hunting equipment, hunters set out to track down and capture these elusive creatures. Before embarking on a leopard hunting expedition, meticulous preparation is very important. Hunters equip themselves with hunting tools, appropriate medicine, and other necessary equipment. In addition, it is necessary to have a clear understanding of the hunting area, including identifying locations that are frequent. When the hunt begins, hunters rely on flashlights to locate elusive prey. When a fox is spotted, a targeted use of hunting equipment is made, culminating in capture. According to a study conducted by the Federal German Environment Agency, an average hunter can harvest about two to three foxes per day. However, there are still skilled hunters capable of surpassing this number, successfully catching more than five foxes in a single day. The regulations governing fox hunting in Germany, as outlined in the federal hunting law, include a variety of conditions. These include possessing a hunting license, using a shotgun with a range of at least 100 acres, using appropriate ammunition and adhering to designated hunting areas. The law also incorporates measures to protect wildlife, such as restricting hunting of fox cubs, avoiding hunting during the breeding season, and avoiding hunting in designated protected areas. The German government is actively exploring the implementation of new measures to manage the growing fox population, which may encompass restricting the number of foxes permitted for hunting. As this discourse unfolds, the delicate balance between conversation and control remains the focal point in the ongoing dialogue surrounding fox hunting in Germany. Farmers have grappled with thousands of foxes attacking humans and livestock. How do you cope with this challenge can be further explored in the following video, so let's continue watching together. Wild boars are omnivores with a diverse diet, including grass, leaves, fruits, seeds, and even small animals.
They are highly capable of digging and use this technique to find food. The omnivorous nature and digging ability of wild boars can have negative consequences for the ecological environment. When born, baby wild boars have light brown fur with black spots on the neck and shoulders and weighs about 20 to 25 kilograms. They can stand and walk immediately after birth and find their own food after about two weeks of age. Although they have lived in their mother's herd, when they reach two years old, they will separate from the herd to find a mate and start their own family. Wild boars can cause great damage to the environment. They dig up trees, stumps, turn over grass and soil, which can lead to destruction of tree root systems and thinning of forests, a loss of biodiversity. The world's wild boar population is increasing estimated to be about 100 million, with the majority in Asia being 80% and Europe being 15% and America being 5%. Wild boars also affect forest woodlands by digging in search of food and water, causing ecosystem destruction and hardship for other animals. Although many measures have been taken to control the wild boar population, their numbers continue to increase sharply due to their ability to reproduce rapidly. Tropical, temperate mangrove, broadleaf and coniferous forest areas are all places where feral pigs cause the most negative impacts. The Meinjäger Pro Rigid Panel Feral Boar Trap is not only an effective tool in controlling feral boar populations, but is also a breakthrough with advanced technology utilizing solar energy to bring convenience and high performance. Specific installation instructions and related information below will help you better understand the power of technology and the trap's unique design. Started with assembling the trap panels, each with simple legs for assembly using screws or dowels. Join them together using connecting rods to create the basic frame for the trap. The ability to easily and quickly install is a strong point of the trap. The trap door is located at the bottom and can be opened manually or electrically, providing great convenience and flexibility. This helps improve efficiency and reduces effort required on the part of the user. The bait is placed inside the trap using foods such as fruits, vegetables or food that can attract wild boars to increase the likelihood of attraction. This is an important part of optimizing the trap's ability to catch large numbers. The trap uses solar energy through a panel placed on the top providing power for the trapdoor, motor and signal lights. This model is not only efficient, but also demonstrates a commitment to renewable energy sources. When wild boars approach, the motion sensor will activate the trapdoor, trapping them inside quickly and effectively. 
This proves the accuracy and quick response of the trap in all situations. Traps are often placed in areas with high wild boar densities, such as forests, fields, and grasslands. This helps optimizing the ability to capture and control wild boar's populations in the most effective way possible. The Jaeger Pro Hard Plate Mine Trap is not only popular in the United States, but is also widely used in many countries around the world, such as Canada, Europe, and Asia. This demonstrates the diversity and flexibility in global application. Each night, Traps are capable of catching 10 to 30 wild boars, making them an effective and sustainable solution for population control. This efficiency not only brings immediate benefits, but also maintain ecological balance. Users can harvest two to four traps per day, creating the ability to control 730 to 1,460 wild boars per year. This demonstrates the trap's versatility and wide applicability. With the Jaeger Pro Hard Plate Mine Wild Boar Trap, it is not simply a wild boar control tool, but also a symbol of modernity and convenience in population management, bringing efficiency and convenience to farmers, users who are passionate about hunting. The Boar Buster system uses innovative design with a circular outer and an inner shell to effectively trap wild boars. This overview sets the stage for the assembly and operating details that follow. The assembly process begins with the construction of the inner ring, which alternates doweled and unbolted panels. The trap pins are then securely inserted into the grooves on the inner ring plate. Then the rollers are attached one of which is removable for disassembly. The outer ring is constructed by aligning the panels with rollers and fixing the connections. Finally, the trigger components including the latch arm bar, winch leg and electronic latch are installed. According to a study conducted by Texas A&M University, the Boar Buster system is 80% more effective than some other types of traps. Wild boars can be caught in all sizes, from piglets to adults. This trap also traps the same number as the mine trap. There are a number of other types of wild boar traps to deal with this invasive species. Coyotes, as apex predators, have taken advantage of changes in the environment to expand their range and adapt to new challenges. One of the main causes of this increase is the dramatic decline of natural competitors, such as grizzly bears and jaguars. Hunting and habitat loss have reduced the populations of these predators, creating an ecological vacuum that coyotes have the potential to fill. This poses a major challenge for wildlife conservation, while also creating opportunities for coyotes to prevail. 
This change in habitat not only creates new opportunities for coyotes, but also presents challenges for managing and protecting the urban environment. Another important factor is climate change. Warming in Canada makes the climate more favorable for coyotes, allowing them to adapt to a wider range of climatic conditions. This change may be an important factor behind the recent sudden increase in coyotes. Coyote populations have reached an estimated 30,000 animals in Canada, especially concentrated in areas with abundant food and shelter. To date, about 60% of Canada's land area has become ideal habitat for them. But this also creates challenges for people and land managers. Coyotes not only affects the biosphere, but also creates economic problems for the agricultural industry. With strong hunting power, they are capable of attacking the livestock, causing an estimated loss of up to 10,000 cattle per year in Canada, with a significant damage value of up to $10 million. Coyotes are animals with strong reproductive abilities. Their offspring began reproducing at just two years old, helping the species grow rapidly. Each letter of coyotes can have four to six pups, and pregnancy lasts 60 days. During the first six months of life, they receive special care from their mother, helping them develop and prepare for independent life. The wisdom of wolf mothers in caring for their children helps them learn and develop the skills necessary to live in harsh environments. Coyotes typically live an average of about 10 years, but some individuals can live longer than 15 years. This poses a challenge in how to manage and monitor populations to maintain balance with the habitat. In Canada, coyote populations have increased significantly from about 10,000 in 1990 to 30,000 in 2023. This growth presents challenges in terms of maintaining ecological balance and managing the population. That is expected that this growth rate will continue in the future, posing many challenges for conservation and environmental management programs. The process of Canadian farmers dealing with coyotes through hunting has become an important strategy in controlling the country's coyote population. So how do they exactly carry out this process is a matter of great concern and requires special planning, focus and consideration. First and foremost, farmers and hunters plan a hunting campaign together. This includes identifying the hunting area, setting an appropriate schedule and deciding what hunting method will be used. And this requires a thorough understanding of the coyote behavior and ecology for sound and effective plans. The process of hunting coyotes is often done by various means, such as guns, traps or using hunting dogs. This flexibility in method selection optimizes capture potential and minimizes the risk of unwanted harm to the surrounding environment. After coyotes are hunted, regulated harvesting and processing are carried out. This ensures the hunting takes place legally and safely, while minimizing negative impacts on the environment. The choice of the coyote hunting method is not only based on efficiency, but also on community acceptance. This helps creating a consensus on controlling coyote populations and protecting the interests of farmers. However, 
Although this hunting method has had positive results with the reduction of coyote populations in Canada, there are concerns about the negative impact on the ecosystem. They argue that coyotes play an important role in maintaining natural balance, helping to control herbivore populations. The issue of balancing the short-term benefits and long-term impacts of coyote hunting is a complex challenge. Land managers in Canada are faced with the tasks of not only working effectively in controlling coyote populations, but also protecting biodiversity and considering ecological impacts. Lick trapping of coyotes has become an important strategy in controlling coyote populations in Canada. To successfully carry out this campaign, farmers and hunters had to plan meticulously. This plan includes determining the area where the trap will be located, the appropriate time, and the specific type of trap to be used. Coyotes often occur in grasslands, savannas, and forest areas, where they live and hunt as well. The trapping process is done strategically, starting with placing traps in locations where coyotes are likely to travel, such as paths, trails, and feeding areas. The trap is triggered by an attractive bait, usually meat or bone. The trap is placed so that the lick gripper is hidden underground or in the bushes, creating an effective system of capturing coyotes. The value of these traps can be up to $50 each, and they can be used for many years. In fact, this measure has proven effective in reducing coyote populations in Canada. Each year, an estimated 1,000 coyotes are caught in traps, which is a significant number. Not only will it reduce the spread of wolves, but this campaign will also bring economic benefits to Canada. Coyote meat, when sold in the market, costs between $5 to $10 per pound generating a significant source of income. However, conservationists worry that trapping could have a negative impact on the ecosystem. They argue that the coyotes plays an important role in controlling herbivore populations and maintaining natural balance. The question is, how to balance the short-term benefits of reducing wolf populations with the long-term impact on the ecosystem? Land managers in Canada are facing a complex challenge, needing to find solutions that protect both sides of the issue and ensure balance in managing the natural environment. If you found this video interesting, please don't forget to comment number one below in the comment section right now. And finally, thank you so much for watching this whole entire video right here with me.
So since these solutions have been affecting and preventing the growth of colonies of some invasive species, do you believe in any other better solution? If so, please don't forget to share your comments and opinions down below. Plus, don't forget to share, like, and subscribe to support our channel with our upcoming videos. And lastly, don't forget to share this video with all your friends so that they can watch it and enjoy it as well.